Hey there everyone, and Happy New Year! My first painting of 2017 was this commission for author Joseph John for his upcoming science fiction book, Democracy Incorporated. It's a world where the US government has been replaced by mega corporations, and I had a ton of fun creating all these logos and advertisements for it to uh, help bring Joseph's world to life. So I'll walk you through a bit about how I created this. The first thing I did is cre to create the perspective lines, which were the bread and butter of this painting. Anytime you're doing a seascape like this, you're gonna want some perspective lines first. Unless you're just that good. I suppose some people can just eyeball it. I am not one of them. So here's what I did. The white square is my canvas, which is actually made for uh, it's being made for a parallax website, so it had some fairly specific measurements which are on the screen. Um, they're sitting on what ends up being the horizon line, actually, which is the line where the perspective lines from each of the two perspective points on the horizon meet up, or point at each other. You can see that it's three-point perspective. Uh, the points are far off to the left of the canvas, just barely off to the right of the canvas, and then quite a bit above. Um, that was what was going to create the right shape of buildings for what I was looking for. So then I went in and started sketching some of the buildings. Now these buildings are going to be stretching up into and over the clouds, so they are tall and thin. Um, I wanted them to go back quite a bit to show some depth and also to show some of the sky behind it and to show some of the roadways that connect them to have those be visible. Um, and that would help create some tension with their right angles to all those parallel lines that are going straight up and down, which are the buildings. Um, also the two buildings in front uh, to help give even more depth and to frame it all. I created this thumbnail first just to give me a very vague idea of colors. Um, then I started in on the sky, and I probably shouldn't have created this whole sky first in retrospect. It was a lot of extra work that ended up being done and then was covered up by buildings. But I had fun with it, and I'm always learning more about clouds the more I paint them because they are difficult, fickle little creatures, clouds. So no regrets on my end. For the thumbnail, I was just sketching in lines roughly, but for the real thing, I wanted straight lines. So I ended up using the brush tool on this illustration less than I think I ever have before. There was a very heavy usage of the polygonal lasso tool. For those of the, you that may not be familiar with it, it's in the same place on your tools palette as the regular lasso tool. So just right click on the lasso tool and you'll see the various options, including that one. The lasso tool you drag around while holding to create a selection. Most of you will already know. The polygonal lasso tool, you click once to make a corner, then click again to make another corner, and you keep going to create, well, a polygon. <laughs> to close off the shape, um, click pretty close to your original point and it should stop creating the shape and make a selection out of it. If it doesn't though, fret not, just hit enter and it should close it off and make the selection for you. Then you use um, Option and Delete on a Mac or Alt and Backspace on a PC to fill the selection with your foreground color. This is how I created a base for all the buildings and roadways. Once I had that done, the next step was to create windows. Uh, the windows are going to each follow a different perspective point line. The side of the buildings that's facing us are following the perspective lines on the of the left perspective point, so they're angling up and to the right. The other side of the buildings, the part that's angling back away from us, are following the perspective lines from the rightmost perspective point. So they go down and to the right, and at a sharper angle, mind you, because that point is closer in than the one on the left is. So if you look at that first main building, you'll see what I mean, and you'll see me bringing up the perspective point layers that I use as a guideline often in the making of this. I created the windows fairly loosely because they were going to have a lot of variance to them and I wanted to still have a bit of a loose painterly feeling to a few parts of this illustration. 
So I used the brush tool to make lines on a new layer and then erased away parts to create the different window shapes. Keeping in mind that only some of the offices will be lit, since this is a somewhat dark scene, uh, being below the cloud cover and somewhat smoggy. The uh, front buildings I wanted a bit of texture to, even though the others are all far enough away to not really need it. So I just created some overlapping lines at right angles to each other in various shapes, made a brush out of them, uh, duplicated them, moved them around, and then used the transform tool to make them fit my perspective and created a texture that way. I'm also adding in some details like the bridges, some lights on the bridges, etc. I knew that I wanted this scene to be absolutely filled with lights, advertisements, and more lights and more advertisements. Oh, did I mention ads everywhere? Yes, that. I decided the window color was looking too weak when it was the light orange, uh, so I made them brighter and tinted them back towards the blue end of the spectrum. I also added some variants to the glows that were produced by the windows, however, uh, with some different colors being added in there, and um, also made some brighter than the others. The much, uh, much of the rest of this, though, is uh, creating those ads, really. I'm going to speed through that part pretty quickly because there's not a whole lot to learn from it. I will mention that I used a few different online create your own logo online websites for ideas for a lot of them since I don't have much experience with logo design. Um, the memorial at the bottom right was a lot of fun to create though and ended up being one of my favorite parts of the painting. In Democracy Incorporated, the main character is struggling with the loss of his mother who was a part of an expedition to Mars that was meant to help set up, uh, colonize the planet, and failed. Hence the memorial and the never forget, uh, a term which has already been coined in our time, but which I'm sure will endure 500 years into the future for this world to also make use of it. A few things to note when it comes to structural shapes like buildings. You want to make sure you add some variance to them somehow, and I touched on this a little bit earlier. like. How boring would this be if every single window was on in every single office of every single building, creating perfectly square windows all the way up the side of each and every building? Aside from being unrealistic, it would be boring. Some lights are slightly different tints than others. I actually could have done a lot more with this particular fact and probably would have added more variance to window colors if it weren't for all the colors that the ads bring to the painting. So to break up the monotony, um, stagger things. Create a variance in color and light or brightness or shape. Anything to make the shapes more interesting and different. Overlay and colored dodge layers are your friend when it comes to making things glow. This last part of the painting process is one of my favorites and it's when I think it really starts to come to life. I add a little bit of bouquet from the lights, but I didn't want too much of that going around in this particular piece anyway. Um, bouquet are those little circles, by the way, that get created when lights are in the background, especially of a photo and it's out of focus. It creates the, those circle flare effects. Um, I also add some light flares that I made using a custom brush. Uh, to draw the eye to a few places, but really this is just me adding that variance that I just got done talking about in the form of glows and light. Even something as regular and even as a neon sign has parts of it that appear brighter or lighter than other parts of it. Uh, some windows will glow more than, more than others. I also decided the bridges were crazy boring for a wor world that's 500 years in the future and added some more lights along them. Most of this, though, is me just taking a soft-edged brush on a new layer set to overlay and with a white color just dabbling in light in various places. And you can see a huge difference in the painting before and after this step. I think that's about it for things I can help explain about this one, but as always, if you have any questions about how I created some parts of this or anything at all really, just leave a comment and I will happily answer. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that awesome like button if you were happy with this tutorial, and maybe even comment. 
Also check out my other tutorials because each one touches on different things that I'm learning about this wonderful world of illustration and digital art. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.